Thanks very much, everybody. Uh, so I'm Dickie Lewis, from a director from White Red Architects, and I'm here today just to be the introduction act to the main event, but I'd quite like to just introduce our practice and tell you a few things about our work and where, what our stance on architecture is. So we are a small practice, um, young practice based in Shoreditch. This is our boy band photo of the three directors. And um, we're all uh, from previously large practice. So myself, I was from Foster and Partners, Jesus, was from TP Bennett and Joe was from AHMM. And we're used to working on quite large scale projects. Um, so we're kind of now the young guys doing it for ourselves out there with a, with a smaller practice, but hopefully we've got the big practice mentality. And we have an office just down the road from here in Charlotte Road in Shoreditch. And that is actually also one of our projects where we helped convert a former art gallery. And it's now our London base, but we also have uh, a small office in Mumbai because we have quite a few international projects and we also have quite a few at the moment uh, popping up in Mumbai and, and throughout India. So today I just wanted to talk about the role of the architect. Um, yeah, so something that we've been discussing recently, especially um, in the club candle, um, is the commerciality and the understanding that the architect needs to have for the developer. We recently attended the investor workshop, which had 30 of the top minds around the table and we were, we were pretty overwhelmed. Uh, but at the same time, it was really great to understand and, and develop our knowledge of how we can also help serve our clients. But what I wanted to talk today about is not only do we have to have that commercial sense, but the architect's role is the lead design consultant. So it is our role to think creatively. And what I'd like to show you is a, a few examples of how we've taken a brief from our client and try to apply some creativity into it to, to solve some problems. So we believe that design does add value and it's quite difficult to uh, convince our clients sometimes of the money to spend. And it's obvious that it's not always the case that you know the architects get their way because if it was our way it would all be curvy and a lot of glass but you know it doesn't stack up for the GDV but the, the simple methods you can have that it's just about thinking a little bit differently and going an extra mile um, that, that we believe so I'd like to show you three projects that we've uh, completed or are underway uh, about how we've interpreted the client's brief and added an element of creativity so this is the first project, which is Office. Uh, it's recently completed and we started at this stage where it was just the shell. Um, and it's an office in Swiss Cottage for a mortgage brokering and finance company. And their brief was that they had the principles of their company, which was that it was a quality product they were selling. It was bespoke and they wanted the reputation to be known. So we aligned that to the nostalgia of Savile Row and tailoring and tried to generate the concept based on that and start the design process. And that part of their brief as well was that they wanted marble in some of the meeting spaces and they, they did actually want their logo everywhere. So we were a little bit worried it would end up looking a bit like Trump Towers. And so <laughs> what we tried to do was take this brief and, and interpret it into a design phase where we could model it in 3D. These are some of our initial renders where we worked hard with a client to, to kind of go through iterations of the design. And we ended up coming back time and again to this meeting room. And this, this main feature wall, really, it was something that we, we kept on, in, his, in the client's eyes, kept on banging on about. But we, we felt that the meeting room is one of the most important places. It's where their clients meet, meet them. And we, we wanted to make the rest of the office fit out and um, wanted it to, to be efficient, efficiently designed and efficiently spent on so that there was more budget allocated to this feature wall. And in the end, we managed to, to get their marble in. Um, and it was in the form of small, thousands of small, tiny marble Carrara tri triangles. And this is the finished project. And, and so basically, we, we, got, we worked together, collaborated with a local artist, Giles Miller, 
to generate this feature wall and to go through iterations of marble manufacturers to try and get enough consistency in the, the triangles. But as you can see for the rest, we've got an exposed ceiling, which is very nicely detailed and, and deals with the sound well. It's got great acoustic baffles, but the, the main focus is on this meeting room. So this is the feature wall and it has their logo, which shows when it's, the, the light is shone up and down. And as you can see from the right, there's thousands of these tiny chamfered marble triangles. And the client's feedback was that he loved it in the end because all of his clients came in First thing they did was touch the wall and have that moment with themselves. And, and, and it was really a nice introductory moment. So we, we felt like this was a little victory that we, we'd won to help the client direct them in, in the right way. And um, as you can see, it's a, it's a fabulous meeting room. So we have quite a few projects in India at the moment. And um, a lot about what we know from residential in the UK and the kind of European mindset. They, they like it and they like that, that translation. So where they live, we, we have a project in Gurgaon. It's um, a town outside of Delhi. And it's almost a commuter town into Delhi. So most of the clients that, or the, the, the purchasers of the, of the apartments that we'll be designing are high net worth individuals or wealthy individuals. And they, they don't get involved with the traffic that's at the ground plane. So they kind of helicopter to and from work and living. So what we, we had is we, had, we, we worked on models and tested out iterations of this tower so that on the top floor we had this sky garden where they would need, have their helipads. And then we thought that it's all about bringing the community together and having communal parks, but we can put them all the way through the sky so that, that actually the tower it has this wrapping around of gardens. And what we, what we did was we put them in a spiral so that every three stories has access to a communal garden, a three-story high garden. As you can see on the right, this is a cut through the tower at a certain point. And then and here on the left is a zoom in on that sky garden. And the clients, the, the, the purchasers of the property absolutely loved it. And what we did here was we enforced kind of this European mentality into the, the kind of the cultural, uh, the cultural style of the Indian developer. And then it made their property more valuable because it sold quicker and people were more attracted to this project. So they sold a lot more apartments on spec. So a recent project I'd like to talk about as well is of how we went through the design process is the hotel we're currently under in going through planning stage with. And the location for this hotel is in the beautiful Lake District. It's a place called Cockermouth. And um, what we want, we had as a brief really was, the client was a car manufacturer and rally team owner. And, and it, he needed a hotel next door to his manufacturing facility. And then, as you can see from this image, he's also just finished uh, a Formula One compliant racetrack. So it's a bit of a mad site and a mad brief. And, and he, he was just requesting a simple hotel just to put people up, put clients up. But what we really wanted to do was, because he had this inkling for it to be modular and for it to be efficient, we wanted to prove that whilst you can do modular, you can also have bespokely designed elements which can make it look fantastic. So we took that inspiration from the lake and the mountains and we use the idea of this, this shape you see in the Lake District with the, the lake in front, and we put it into our design, into the expression of this roof. So we started with planning out the hotel with its simple modular form, the most efficient layout you could really go for, two wings and an atrium and back of house. And then we, we kinked it. We kinked it so that, um, have a clicker. So we kinked it so that it made the most of the site and also interacted with that approach as you arrived and created this large atrium space. And then we sculpted the roof so that it actually resembled the mountains from what we, we drew our inspiration. This sculpturing of the roof gave us more surface area to put solar panels and solar collectors, which was again, something the client really wanted it to be a sustainable building. And then this attenuation lake, is 
the, the surface water runoff from the car park and this new building, it has to be dealt with somewhere. So what we wanted to do was create this mirror lake at the front of the, the building and to actually make it part of the entrance for the people driving and, and pulling up to the hotel. So we've got this beautiful mirror finished lake, which actually you can see a car approaching the, the hotel. It's got this fantastic entrance view as well. And we wanted to, it to feel like the car's almost floating across the water. So in essence, it's a very simple and modular rest of the hotel. The hotel rooms themselves can be built anywhere in Europe or around the world in a modular format. And they can arrive on site and you can just pick the chair up once it's fallen over and it, it's done. But the rest of the elements are bespoke. And the roof itself is the, is the, the kind of more adventurous design element. But at the same time, it's just a variation of the pitches. The client's feedback was he loved it. And he, he also loved that it felt like the Scandinavian lodge. We'd used a lot of woods inside and we wanted people visiting from the Lake District to come and use this, this hotel whilst they're doing their outdoor activities and come and relax in it. And it's not just another premier inn. And again, so you can see here from the reception, it's got these amazing woods and uh, natural materials and at this front entrance it engages with the landscape of the lake districts so just to reiterate on on my point really is, to, is that we feel that whilst it's important for architects to be commercially minded and work with their developers we think it's as important to push back and be creative and and try and help reveal decisions that otherwise might not have been before that's it Thank you.